Hey everybody, welcome to Hope for the Soul. This is our last episode for this season. Last one. And we're filling it, I might add. Do it. We're filling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, no, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not filling the episode. We're just we were talking that we we're all dragging today. <laughs> yeah, we're dragging. I'm just glad to be here. Hey, but I'm gonna put a little pep in y'all's step. I got a couple. The pastor has returned. Oh, we need to be pastored. Pastor was telling his congregation, if you want to go to heaven, I need all of you to stand up. The whole congregation stood except for Elder Brother Williams. He said, if the if you want to go to heaven, stand up. He still, Elder just sat there like a bump on a log. Again, like more emphasis this time. He, if you want to go to heaven, stand up. Still, Brother Williams sat there. He said, Brother Williams, do you not want to go to heaven? He said, I do, but I thought you were getting ready to go now. (laughs) I'm not ready. (laughs) I'm not ready to go. Also, the same pastor, young couple, uh, invited him over for dinner. He was so excited about this dinner. He gets to the house and... The husband and wife are still in the kitchen preparing. So he asked the little boy, he said, hey, what are we having for dinner? He said, we're having goat for dinner. Exactly. That's what the pastor did. He said, goat. He said, are you sure we're having goat? He said, I'm positive. We're having goat. He said, son, are you sure? He said, well, I heard dad telling mom. Today is just as good as any other day to have the old goat. (laughs) (laughs) The old goat's coming for dinner. (laughs) I must confess, I've been guilty of saying old goat before. Old goat. You do. You do. Old buzzard. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Buzzard and goat is one of two of your favorite words. A lot of times I call the boys buzzard brains. Uh Uh-huh. Aardvark or buzzard brain. (laughs) I don't know what an aardvark is, but... I take your word for it. Y'all look at me like the goat or the buzzard. Yes, he does. He does. You are the goat. I am the goat. goat. Okay, the old, what is the greatest of all time? There you go. There There you go. 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 I've received that word. (laughs) Might be old, but he's still a goat. (laughs) It applies. That's great. Well, it's been a good season. It has been good. It's gone by fast. It's been a hectic few months. Yeah. Over the last few weeks and months, I've, I've had to miss several, but I just feel like I've been hanging on to life, and life has just been dragging me along, and the only thing touching the, the ground is the tips of my toes. I had to buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Wore out the toes, not the heels. <laughs> you made Alex laugh. <laughs> Alex is here. Okay, so what's everybody have for summer plans? Go ahead, Dad. The old goat? Oh. Go ahead, you old goat. <laughs> It's going to be a busy summer. It's going to be a busy summer. Are y'all vacationing? Oh, yes, absolutely. Our normal week, we're going to be gone. And um, I may be gone two or three more weeks before that for other stuff. But uh, yeah. I will say, in preparation for that, I haven't preached in a couple of weeks. And I think it's another, I'm not preaching this weekend either. Who is? You. You are. The old goat really? preaching. We had this conversation <laughs> that the goat is preaching. I thought I was preaching the holiday weekend. That's this weekend. That's this weekend. This is an example of where we are. <laughs> this is Memorial Day weekend. This is Memorial Day this weekend. This is it. Yeah, kids oh. get out of school. Today's oh. not, because our day yesterday was a lot different than a normal Monday. Yeah. Yesterday felt like a Wednesday. I, I feel like today's yeah. Thursday. And it's only yeah, Tuesday. yeah. So, but yeah, you're preaching Sunday. Oh, I'm ready. So it'll be two or three weeks <laughs> total before that I've gone without preaching. A Sunday before I preach again. So you've kind of gotten like a staycation. I've got a staycation in preparation because <laughs> because I'm going to miss the old goat and I'm, his mistress are going to no, not his mistress. Oh my goodness, the missus, uh, missus. The missus. Wow. Hey, st- stop. We don't the press, have that. Stop the press. Stop the press. My goodness. <laughs> Whoa. That's probably the, the biggest mess up I've ever had on Hope yep, of the Soul. Of all it, time. it is your mammy. That's wow. Going off it's with my me. mom. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I've told y'all I'm out of it today. Oh, we got to move this thing alone, all right. So, yeah, so I've had a couple weeks off for preaching because 
we're, we're leaning You're on gearing dad up for June because June's coming. <laughs> June's coming. June's coming. But you, I'm, a, I'm gonna miss the first Sunday of the month, or is that the second Sunday? Of the That's month? the second Sunday of the month. Second yeah. Sunday of the month, third Sunday of the month, and the fourth Sunday of the month. Uh-huh. Night. And then that leaves you. Uh, I He's come, gonna be the globe trotting pastor. Globe trotting pastor. I come. Tr- I come back on a Wednesday or Thursday. The globe trotting goat. <laughs> The GG, <laughs> and I'm here for two or three days, and then we take vacation. Yeah. Well, we're going to Pentecostal Vegas. We are going to Branson <laughs> on vacation. I'm actually really excited. What week excited. are y'all going? Well, we're gonna the last week of July. Yeah. Hey, I don't have anything scheduled that week. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't rent that big of a, of a cabin. Y'all so. want to take me? The old goat. <laughs> Dad, you're welcome to go, but I think I don't want to stay in the same house with you. No. Yeah, no, you don't we want don't to do, do that. that. It's it's crazy. It's it's all nighters. <laughs> we <laughs> just all right, kids, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to Branson. We've been through a couple of times because of North American Youth Congress and all that. And last time we actually went went to Branson. Presley was a year old. Presley was a year old. That's right. Y'all went to some of those things where old people were, and y'all were the youngsters. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all felt it. Yeah, we were. We well, came home early from that now. trip. You're 40 years old now. You'll fit right in. We've been <laughs> cracking up because we are legitimately <laughs> excited about going to Branson, Missouri. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I'm okay if people make fun of me about that. Like, just go ahead. Just Pile on. I'm it's gonna fine. have fun. I'm, I'm so, going to Branson. So what is the big fun. park? Is that Dollywood that's in Branson? The big no, park? that's uh, Pigeon Forge. Okay, so uh, there's a big park. Dixie Stampede. Yeah, we haven't. Uh, we're contemplating that. Silver oh, Dollar yeah. City. There Dick, we go. Silver yeah. Dollar City is a good value yeah. for your kids. I don't. I've been. I was pricing stuff this morning. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as value, <laughs> especially when you got three kids that are almost teenagers. Uh huh. Well, but. Just, as long as your credit card doesn't melt before you get back, <laughs> yeah. well, got, you'll have thir- 12 or 11 months to pay it off to do it no, again. No, well, that's not how we operate. Everything will be paid off before we go. Uh-huh. Paid uh, incrementally, we're doing it. I'm buying something today, and the next week I'll buy something. and mm-hmm. it'll So be- your inner Dave Ramsey is really kicking in here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So Dave's going with you. <laughs> I can't go with you, but Dave is staying with you. I think you. the only thing that we won't that we'll have to do there is meals and random yeah. stuff that we decide to do, but all all the big events each day will be we're paying for that one week at a time. Starting now. Um Alex, what are you doing this yeah. summer? Camp. <laughs> Just yeah. doing camp. Um camp for two weeks and then I don't know after that. Are you are you doing the janitor work at camp again? No, I've graduated. That that uh, that's a hard fast no from Sister Shirley. I've she graduated. has she has moved on to different the different dimensions of service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's now a matron. She's a matron. Uh, she's. I don't like, actually. I don't know that. I'm just I don't saying. Know, they don't that. tell you. Until are you on any of the singing teams, Alex? Yes, for camp meeting, but really? then I'm doing a youth camp, and I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. I guess. Well, good for you. So I don't even know what to prepare for. Are you gonna Are you gonna get your preaching license uh, during the summer? Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue what this summer holds. Well, she's gonna live it week by week. She's I guess. gonna follow the cloud. She's, yeah, the summer cloud. The summer cloud. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Hey, we have a fellow in the church that uh, when he came when he came to the Lord here three or four years ago. He changed his life, and a lot of his worldly friends started calling him, you know, like preacher and reverend. So he went off and got himself a, an ordination, <laughs> and he's now an ordained minister. Uh, with I don't know what church it is, <laughs> but he is a the Church of Google. It may be the it may be he may be the pastor of all things Google. I don't know, but he he has got him he's got himself a, an ordination now. here. Somebody in our church? Yeah, our church. Yep. Maybe I'll do that. There you go, Let's Alex. Get, I think I think he got it for like ninety nine dollars. <laughs> I think he had to pay one hundred twenty five to get the certificate, but he got the. Got and the they ordination. don't do background check. They don't do credit check. You don't have to. Theology doesn't matter. Nope. I think it's probably just so you can marry people, right? 
Yeah, Mary, Mary and Barry. Mary and Barry. You know, it's the same crowd comes to those meetings. Marys and Barrys. Everybody wears the same clothes. That's it. Oh, and you get the good spot at the uh, hospital. Oh. You do get that clergy parking you spot. You get the clergy. <laughs> and when that clergy parking spot is full, I pull in that maintenance parking spot. I've been known to park in a doctor's parking spot. Well, I'm going to confess. If I'm if I'm representing the great physician, I'm going to park in the <laughs> physician's parking. <laughs> that got dead. Well, yes. if he laughs. <laughs> well, here here's one of the clip things. that Alex. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to also confess because I'm you know I'm I'm looking at really having this doctor. And what greater up. place to do this than hope for this? Whole Absolutely, <laughs> confess it out. I mean, we're we're stealing parking places and we have mistresses now. So I cannot believe I said that. Oh my word, that's so embarrassing. So since I've um, I'm 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 seeing the end of this doctorate thing the last few weeks when I go up to the hospital. I will not park in a physician's parking spot, but the hospitals we go to, for some reason, they had signs made at different times. And if it says doctor's parking, You're a doctor. I will park in it. I will not park in the physician's. <laughs> now, you do the physician since you represent the great physician. Yeah, yeah. You're fine. I, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, an ambassador of a physician. You're an, you're an ambassador of the You Lord. are the hands and feet. Whew. Salt and light. We didn't you, know what we were going to talk about this episode, but now we know. But this is how the cloud moves. We have you take that parking spot and you go with God. You go in there and just salt and light that whole hospital. Well, the good thing about like when you go to the medical center, the Valley Parking is free for me, for ministers at most hospitals. Really? Did, you didn't know that? I've been paying for a long time. <laughs> oh, 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 you been? Yeah, well, I don't have a sign. Or I don't have a badge. I don't. But you put the sticker on your windshield. You better believe. I don't even do there. that. I just tell them I'm a preacher. They don't even ask for validation. Really? They're like, who wants to be a preacher? <laughs> like, if you're that crazy, go ahead. <laughs> and then and then volunteer the information. <laughs> so, uh, but the hospitals in the woodlands at Valley, they don't. They don't do that. They don't have that clergy discount. So I, that's why I park in that great physician parking spot if I have to. I like it. So this is. Now, do you do you use a military discount? I don't. No. No. That's no. 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 no that's that, 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 that's that's crossing the line. <laughs> that's no, no. Crossing the line. But you're in the Lord's army. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you call theologizing a whole theologizing an entire. Bad yeah. practice. Yeah, yeah. This is no. I don't do that. You're the Lord's army. You can get see. The see. See. That'll get you canceled. But representing the great physician parking, and they've got like fifty of them. Well, we need a lot of doctors. But only twenty five of them are full. There's always at least half of them are more empty. <laughs> Doctor Martin, I'm so sorry if you've had to go to the hospital on <laughs> short notice had, yeah. and you couldn't find a parking spot and you had to park. In the clergy parking in the spot. <laughs> in the commoners parking spot. The regular folk. Sorry, Doc. It's I've because been, of your pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd even park in the coroner's parking spot. Oh, I have before, but that was when I was... No, actually, no you know what, what corner. <laughs> wasn't that, no. Um, but um, I've been to those levels of the hospital, and those aren't the fun places to go to. That level of the hospital is a scary night or day that's coming to the churches at Well, night. it's not like they have to rush to. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're wrong for that. No, but like, like so even they're like. They're going to wait for them. They're, 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 they're captive audience. Um, Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> we got to stop. Guys. We got to move on. We've gone. Is this four or five years of the podcast? We keep losing count. And this is. This is the seventh season, so this is the third year. Has to be, right? Is that how that works? Or is it the fourth year? No, it's the fourth year. We started we were, in 21. What, what year is it now? First half of the fourth it year. started during COVID, right? We yeah. started either the fall of 20 or the spring of 21. I okay. thought it was during COVID. What's well, the spring? So January of 21 was kind of like still COVID. It was COVID-ish. If you're out there right now, so, some and people you are still remember COVID-ish. when Hope for the Soul launched, would you send would you us tell us? Tell us. It's not like we have hard drives full of tell files. Tell us where we've been so we can figure out where we're it's trying to go. It's not like we have data we can look at. We need you to tell us. Yeah. They've heard us ramble for 
How long have we been here? Sixteen today? minutes. Sixteen minutes. You know, this is seconds. this is the wrap up for the season, right? Yeah. But we record a couple minutes before we started. Yeah. This is the wrap up for the season. Any wise words? Um, don't park in the physician parking spot. <laughs> no. Definitely don't use the military discount. Yeah. No, I'm I'm really excited about summer though. Like we were talking last week. I don't I don't remember the last time we looked forward to a vacation. Now we've yeah. got two months <laughs> we were talking to the kids and <laughs> the kids are so excited and they're like yeah which vacation because school's getting out this week Ten and we're weeks. like uh two months the week before school goes back <laughs> <laughs> tell them 75 sleeps yeah so I, I told them i was going to get a countdown and put it on their phones so they can look at their phones and yeah see the countdown well normally we go somewhere like after christmas we take a couple of days few days and we didn't get to do that this year well, we'll take a couple of short trips to see family and all that so mm-hmm. they'll still be in vacation mode yeah but but it's been a good year here at the church it's been a very good year here at the church we're halfway through 2024 rocking and rolling yeah space is an issue yes that is the kind of church trouble you want not enough chairs not enough bathrooms not enough classes. Those are that's church trouble. I, I looked this morning. Actually, I didn't know. Obviously, we don't know what we're talking about on this episode. But I looked this morning, and the last two Sundays, I felt like our attendance was off a little bit, and it was. Um, and so I was kind of like, ah, but I know what time of year it is, and mm-hmm. so like I don't get upset. But I guess it, you always want a full room, you know? Yeah. But our off crowds the last two weeks were the average attendance last year. Wow. That's that's how different this year is. Well, May is so crazy all by itself. You've got graduations all month long. And Mother's Day. Yeah, Mother's Day. It's May Which, is hectic for everybody. Yeah. We used to know that people were going to take a Memorial Day vacation, but now because people are blessed, they take a pre-Memorial Day vacation. And then they take a Memorial Day vacation, and it's a good chance they're going to take a post Memorial Day vacation. They got to rest, and they're getting ready for the Fourth of July vacation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But a lot of that's just living in the city, like we do. Like that's changed. I think the last few years because of the growth here in Conroe, people now look for opportunities to get out, to get somewhere quieter, and all that. Absolutely. Well, so, last night I want to compliment you, uh, y'all. Is y'all a good word for this? Y'all. Yeah. Like you that, and that's not worse than the things I've said on this episode. <laughs> we are Texans. <laughs> I want to compliment you. And, uh, you and yesterday, last night, we hosted an area minister's prayer meeting. And we didn't know what to expect. Of course, it was, you know, there was probably some normal attendees for this that did not show. But uh, I was extremely pleased with uh, uh, the crowd. And then our our team, I want to give a shout out to the Conroe Church Ministry team. Yeah, uh, they they represented well last so, night. So yes, so good. Uh, the worship team, uh, Kayla, y'all were you were on point. And I know at one point you thought nobody's going to show. We scratch this and mm-hmm. just and just have a prayer meeting. But the entire the entire meeting was well done, and. Um, uh, it was put together well. Oh, the presentation was incredible, but better than the presentation was the um, the lingering anointing that came, which um, I go to a lot of these prayer meetings. A lot of times those things don't happen, but I think what we felt last night, and and it, it, this is this is a pat you, you two go on the back. Uh, you've been working hard to create a deeper anointing, a deeper flow, uh, and you're moving beyond just a, a sharp presentation. But uh, you're trying to, in Conroe Church, you guys have been, you've, you've spent a lot of energy on, on presentation, a lot of money on presentation. Uh, but the last few months, uh, you've been more concerned with visitation rather than presentation. And so with a strong presentation and then an incredible visitation of the Lord, oh, an incredible thing last night. Yeah. Well, I think there, thanks, Dad. Um, I think that there's a balance. It's not that you can only have one and not the other, and a lot of people feel that way. And I, maybe that's true for some people, but I think for us, what God's calling us to do is to merge the two. Like scripture talks about excellence, 
and I, I believe we should serve the Lord with excellence. I also, I will never waver on our stance of the use of technology, mm-hmm. like this room, case in point, um, and the other things that we do. We're always trying to make tweaks, always trying to just little things that no one will notice, but over time you can see make a big difference. And I, that's just something that we're doubling down on that we feel is a part of our calling is the use of technology. But that that just because we double down on that doesn't mean we're not doubling down on theology and substance and not just adding value. Yes, we're adding value through church culture and all this. I feel like we talked a lot about that the last couple of weeks, especially last week with Josh. But more than that, we want to add spiritual depth. Yeah. And we don't want shallow faith. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's times that it needs to be high, and there's times we had that this past weekend, and I'm grateful for it. We need that. But um, I, I don't want to focus so much on church culture that we miss out on building strong people. And if we want strong church culture and we want to operate with excellence here, the reality is is we need to train people, our ministry team, leaders, volunteers, the serve team, we need to train them not just to operate at a level of excellence here for presentation's sake because it's more than that. It's our worship. But we need to go step past that, and we live a life of excellence. We live a life of dedication. We live a life of devotion. We live a yeah. life of discipline. And that, the personal discipline, the personal health is what makes here so strong. And, uh, yeah, I just think that you mentioned that, and I don't know if that's where you were intending to go with that uh, uh, with this conversation, but presentation is very important and I make no apologies about that, you know, um, because you only have one shot to make an impression with somebody online. You so only have true. one shot to make an imper- a good impression with somebody who walked in the door. Yeah. And so that's, that's always going to be important. Um, but that's, that doesn't mean that we sacrifice a moving of the spirit and we sacrifice you know, like we can have a move of the spirit and things not be crazy and chaotic. Mm-hmm. Now, I think sometimes as apostolics, we confuse crazy and chaotic for demonstration. Like, I, I firmly believe that if you can if you can explain everything that happens at church, then maybe church is too perfected. Um, there's there, there there needs to be some things that we don't understand, but that doesn't mean that it needs to be chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's people are scratching their head because. It's weird. Like a move of the spirit isn't weird. A move of the spirit is powerful. Mm -hmm. And people far from God will recognize a move of the spirit over just a bunch of craziness happening in a room. And that's where I think excellence and the scripture speaks about that is where when we operate with excellence, it ties us not to our own abilities. It ties us to, it's really a matter of stewardship. Like we're going to operate at our best because we want to give God our best. Mm -hmm. Um, how we sing and how we play, how we open a door, our posture, the direction we face as first impression teams in the lobby or in the sanctuary. We're not facing the platform; we're facing the park and the light. Mm-hmm. All of this thing, all of these things, are so important. Um, but it's not just important because we're trying to create a good experience. It's ex- it's important because opening that door is my worship. That service, you know, I'm talking right now to our camera crews. Like, don't put the camera down in service. I know the Holy Ghost might be moving, but when you view that as your opportunity of ministry, you have the opportunity to document someone else's miracle. Right. It's, it's you know, it's not just like, oh, well, the Spirit's moving. I'm going to walk away from my camera. Well, if the Spirit's moving and the drummer got off the drums, it'd greatly affect the service. Yeah. And every role was equally as important um, because they all come together to fulfill what God's calling us to do. And so I'm, I'm just. Well, this brings me to um, what my early morning thoughts were. And I didn't know complimenting uh, the um, with our service, la- the event last night was going to move us in this vein. But I think that there are two people who participate in every, every act of ministry. And I'll flesh this out. I may flesh it out a little bit while we're talking because I haven't yet sitting and written about this. But I think that there is uh, the man and the ministry. Uh, there, are, there's two people that participate in every part of in every action where ministry takes place. It's the man and then the minister. The man's the natural side, 
I mean, where he gathers his skills, whether he, he educates, he self-educates, whatever pathway he, he's on. It's also the way that he handles his life, his finance, his family. Uh, the man part is, is the natural the natural man, uh, uh, how he speaks and where he goes and, and how he, you know, he, he determines that. And then there is also the minister and, and the minister part of this is not limited to simply uh, someone who might be a preacher, but all of us, there's, there's the, there's the man side and the minister side of us. And, and that is where we, where we actually walk in the spirit. That's where we communicate with God. And uh, my, my thoughts this morning went along the lines of, of you cannot, uh, a ministry is going to reflect the man, and the man is going to reflect the minister. Mm -hmm. You can't have a man, the man side of your life cannot outshine the minister side of your life. But um, what you see in the minister it needs to be what you see in the man, and what you see in the man uh, needs to be what is in in reality in the minister. Uh, too many times I've seen where where the man part of it and the ego and the personality it outshined the minister side, the, the humble servant leader. But most generally, is that that's good. Most generally, most generally, what most you generally see, the majority of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most generally, the what you see in the minister is going to be a complete reflection mm -hmm. of what you see in the man. And then also what you see in the man is going to manifest itself on the other side. Um, in my, my book, Sock Girl Theology, that's just coming out, I talk a little bit about those personal areas of life. But our our spirit side can will never be any more stronger or better put together than our natural side is. And then, of course, our natural side should reflect our spirit side. They, it's like spirit and truth. They, that they walk together. And so, my my early morning thoughts, and I guess the thought that I leave with uh, hope for the soul for uh, uh, the next uh, few weeks, when we're we're not going to be releasing things every week, and that is uh, the man and the minister both have got to be mirrors of the other. And and what happens is if you see someone in a public ministry that looks bright and looks wonderful, but you see their lives begin to literally dissolve. It's because it's because the ministry, the ministry is reflective of the man more than likely. And there's uh, how many times have you seen, um, we talked about this yesterday, you go to a meeting and someone's not there that has been there and should be there, but you realize there's been some sort of a catastrophic event in, in their life and, and they are no longer participating. So I'll, I'll leave that uh, leave that part of a thought here uh, with with our followers, of hope for the soul that that let's let me challenge you to 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 fix and to work and to grow yourself so you that that new improved self of where you're really working on yourself, transforming yourself, learning to have your own experiences in life with. With, with spirit living, let that manifest in, in ministry areas of life. And uh, because one without the other is, uh, it, it's just impossible to do. Yeah, well, it, I don't know if it starts as hypocrisy, but it definitely that it, that, that that practice leads to, to hypocrisy. And, I mean, I just, I'm of the mindset where I can't afford my kids to see <laughs> Yeah. Maybe in one way at home and another way at church. Well, we've all seen where where pride drove a ministry yeah. rather than substance. Oh. And so when, when pride drives a ministry, it's built it's it's the wise man who built his house on the mm -hmm. on the rock mm -hmm. uh, or the foolish man who built on the sand. You cannot have a ministry built on shifting sand, built on instability, built on lack of character, built on uh, and, and a void of integrity. Mm -hmm. If you build a ministry on those things, uh, it, when, when the rains come, and they are coming yeah. because it rains on the just and the unjust. These floods we've had right here, I mean, all of us got rained on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and so um, so I just say uh, build your house on on substantive integrity. Build your house on on personal a personal walk with God. 
and 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 then let ministry be manifest in your life. Yeah, that's so good, so good. And I, I think you do that little by little. Oh, one yeah. break at a time. Yeah, I just one day at a time. Big and demonstrative always isn't sustainable. A big public failure always represents uh, a series of small private failures. Yeah. And likewise, a big public success, it's representative of, of a thousand days of little yeah. invisible successes. Yeah. That's what you, going back to, you talked about our team last night. That's what we tell them on a monthly basis and individually when I meet with them. Um, boring is great. Boring is the best way to build your life, little by little. It's I've the last two weeks I've met with several of the people on our ministry team, and I'm just telling them the tur the tor tortoise the turtle and the rabbit they go the tortoise and the hare. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 tortoise didn't have a very grand experience when you were watching it in real time. Yeah, but when he crossed the finish line, you look back and say he didn't wasn't as flashy, wasn't, didn't have all the fun, didn't go some of the places, all the places, maybe didn't even have some of the opportunities. But when he crossed the finish line, everybody knew that he did it little by little. And little by little, I think, is most effective. And that's how I want to live my life, lead our church. So the more We talked about, I believe, this yesterday. The more that you mature, the more that you grow. Yeah the less dependent on others you are for ministry context. Yeah. And so you grow to a point where that you don't need necessarily need some things, yeah. but because we choose say, even, even for instance, you know, certain fellowships and attending certain meetings, you, you arrive at a place where you don't necessarily need to attend something, but that meeting yeah. needs you to be there. Yeah. Even if you're sitting on the back row, uh, it comes a point in, in stability as being a spiritual leader that you're not being there leaves an empty place spiritually. That's, right. That's, right. That's like the pillars of our church here, that our older people. Yeah. They feel insignificant. But the Sundays they don't show, yep. feel there is a void here. Yeah. yeah, so like going back, I had this conversation yesterday with a friend who called, and I told him, I was like, hey, man, this isn't something that I like doing, and this isn't something that you like doing, but they need us there. And that that's not – a statement of pride. That's no. not a statement, but that's because um, they need us there because it offers balance. But also, while I don't want to be there and doing some of th those type of things, when I'm there, I also find balance in my own life because there's people that are a lot different than me that help balance me out. Yeah. And there's people with different ideologies and walks of life that I'm never going to be like, but being around them does help bring balance and context to other people around me that I lead. And even to my own life, it helps me think more three-dimensionally when I'm making decisions. So I think we've rambled a lot. but This is this is good stuff. We started out goofy, but we, we dove in the deep end. We wandered off into the deep yeah. end. I don't think we dove in. Yeah. We followed the cloud. Followed the cloud. <laughs> Man, it said some dumb stuff on this one, too. Well, I've enjoyed this, this season. Um, yeah. It's been fun. Next season is going to be great. A lot more guests next season. We typically in the fall we have a lot more guests on. Well, and, uh, I, I, I'm proud of y'all. I love you. Um, I I want you to. I insist that you find adequate time off this summer. Yeah. I mean, you have to recreate so you can recreate. So you need you need adequate time off, yeah. and then you're in control of your schedule. So if you don't take it off, uh, the church will not fall apart without you. Yeah. I mean, they will. It will function okay if you miss a Wednesday night or something, you know. Just but get yeah. adequate, adequate rest. I was telling Kayla, I, I think this is the first year that I felt okay. Like, I, like I don't feel guilty about like I'm verbalizing. I'm slowing down the summer, he, and I don't feel guilty about it. He has felt that. Then at the same time, I have FOMO if I if yeah. I miss. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm having to balance that. Some yeah. of the I will tell you some of the neatest things, some of the best biggest blessings to our church in the 35 years has been things that happened while when, were gone. when I was out of town. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think probably when we would finally yield to, to leaving, uh, I think everybody needed a break. Yeah. I mean, we needed a break from 
from the pressure and from the people and the people they did a break needed from a break from us <laughs> we're making it sound like we're not going to be here the whole summer i think no, we're going to no. miss one two sundays Sunday. one sunday yeah, yeah one I'm, Sunday. I'm missing nearly a month right now but but maybe they'll let me come back uh, <laughs> if i come back and my chair has been moved <laughs> and it's not the first time my chair has been moved <laughs> <laughs> move my cheese <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. yeah, well, it's going to be a good summer, and everybody that's listening, our Corner Church family, enjoy your summer. We'll see you on Sunday. When you're in town, be at church. Be at church. Be at church if, if you can be here. Um, but we're also not going to guilt trip you. If the Lord's blessed you and you can go, then yeah. enjoy the Lord's blessings. Yeah. Just be a good steward. Just don't forget to go to ConroeChurch.live, <laughs> and when, when you get there, that's re- not even an issue. Remember... <laughs> Remember, click <laughs> click on the give. Recurring give and pop. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah. All right. Well, we love you guys. We love you. Thanks for tuning God in. Bless. We'll see you soon.